I'm Melissa Edens, and this is how I became Orthodox. Uh, I was raised in a, at a house where I was taught that every church has something and no church has everything. And we pretty much for a long time went to whatever church my mother could get a job in. There were some interesting churches that went along with that. Orthodoxy was not one of those. We bounced around until my mother remarried and then we went to the Church of Christ, which was at the impetus of my stepfather who was raised Catholic. And as a Catholic, moving into the Church of Christ, anything remotely Catholic was not really discussed in the house at all whatsoever. So anything regarding icons, regarding candles, incense, any of that was not even on the discussion table, which means that I had not heard of the Orthodox Church at all until I was in my 20s. I was in my 20s. I started to go back to church. I left church for a brief time after I left home and joined the Navy. Then friend, and now husband, invited me to go to the Episcopalian church with him, and so we started there. Over the years that went between our friendship and getting married, we continued with the Episcopalian church, and we took a trip at one point down to St. Augustine, Florida. And in Florida, we happened to go into this little shrine for St. Saint, um, Photios, Saint and I had no idea what I was looking at. I had never seen anything like it before outside of maybe some pictures here or there that I kind of flipped past very quickly. And what I knew was I was in a very small building with probably 250 candles on each wall, and I was very concerned about the fire hazard potential going on there. <laughs> and I had no idea even then that that was an Orthodox anything that I was looking at. It was just, it was like going to Japan and seeing the shrines there. There was no connection for me that it was something um, noteworthy beyond this really cool place to look at. So I kind of took a quick look around and got out while my husband, um, then fiance, stayed in and did, you know, prayers or whatever he was doing looking around. And that was it for a little while until a while later up in Georgia, we were still with the Episcopal Church and I needed to put some flyers on a bulletin board in different, well, on bulletin boards in different churches. And so I went into a Greek Orthodox church that happened to be there in Georgia and asked the priest if I could put these flyers on his bulletin board for international exchange students. And he said, well, have you you know, been to an Orthodox church? And I said, no, I have no idea what you have. I'm just looking for churches. He said, would you like to discuss this? And I was like, sure, why not? I'll ask some questions and get to know you a little better. So he sat down with me and we talked for a little while and he told me a little bit about it. And it still really didn't click. <laughs> it was, you know, another church that, you know, every church has something and no church has everything. And then he said, would you like to see the sanctuary? And I said, Sure, thanks. And so he went through, or he started to go through the door that was in his office, and I started to follow him, and he said, oh no, you can't, you can't go through this door. It's, this is, you're a woman, so you can't go through this door. You have to go around through the front. And I was really, that was like a splash of cold water. It was a total shock, because that was not part of my world in any way, shape, or form. So I went around, and I saw the pretty images that looked a lot like the place in St. Augustine and still did not make any connection. Around the same time, my husband went to Israel, and when he came back from Israel, he said that he really thought we should check out this Orthodox thing because all of the oldest churches in Israel were Orthodox. He had been exposed to Orthodoxy um, many years before. I was not even really tracking on that either. None of that was part of my cognitive, cognitive awareness or thinking. So um, I said, okay. You know, we can consider that. I'll look it up. Great. And he said, well, we'll wait until we leave Georgia because we, we knew we'd be moving at some point. We didn't know when, but we knew we would. But we had a church family in Georgia, and we didn't want to. We wanted a clean, clean transition, I guess you'd say. So maybe a year or so later, we had that move, and we moved from Georgia to Maryland. In the course of the move, I went with a couple of our children to my in-law's house and stayed there while my husband found a place um, for us to live. Because the move was, we had four days to make the move and it was terrible. <laughs> while he was in Georgia, or I mean in Maryland, while he was in Maryland, he 
was also looking for a church for us to look, you know, to try out with this Orthodox thing. And I went to my in-laws non-denominational Baptist-ish church with them, listened while he told me about the different churches that he was checking out. And the one that kept coming up that was Orthodox, because we had talked about that, was um, a place that didn't have a church home yet. They didn't have their own building. And I was like, all right, you know, we'll see how it goes. And he said, okay, he said, but I'm not gonna move into the Orthodox church without you. He said, I'll wait until you're comfortable with it. I'll get your thoughts on it. And I still had not been to an Orthodox church at that point, ever. I had not been to any Orthodox services. I'd been to a Catholic mass with my grandmother. Still had not even talked about it with my stepfather, except for him to say that anything Catholic was not biblical. So it didn't feel like, you know, he was not even happy we had the Episcopalian wedding because it was almost too Catholic. So when we finally got um, to Maryland, we went, my, myself and our two, at that point, two children, um, our two oldest children now, we have eight. <laughs> we had two then. We went to this church, St. Matthew's, in Columbia, Maryland, in their temporary building that they were renting out every every month. And it, for me, this was very much a f trusting and following of my husband because I knew that he was much more educated on all of this. He had read about it more. Um, I knew that I would have questions, but I had no idea even what to ask because you don't know what you don't know. And so I am a person that looks for the negative first which sounds really bad, I suppose, but it's not. I look for the negative first so I can face it and get it out of the way, and then I look at the positive, and I proceed from there, because I'm, I'm actually a very positive-thinking, optimistic person. And so we went to this church. It had a couple of icons on the wall, you know, that they had put up on these tripod stands, like an artist stand, because it was temporary. The priests wore mostly the same clothes as you'd see in, Episcopal ch in an Episcopalian church. That was okay. I had no idea what was going on with the prayers. Um, for all the time that I read the Bible growing up, I did not connect the prayers or the songs or the hymns in any way to what was in the Bible. <laughs> Turns out there's a whole bunch of that in there. And, um, but none of it connected with me. But what really grabbed me, even thinking about it, any time I think about it, it moves me still. The choir director and his wife were um, trained opera singers. And my mother was a singer. And so music is a huge connection for me on anything. And the minute he started singing, it makes your hair stand up. It was beautiful. It was beyond beautiful. I felt what he was singing more than I heard the words because I was also child wrangling. So <laughs> my kids were not real pleased with having to stay still and quiet for two or three hours in the middle of this, you know, in this service. So we stayed on the side and I just listened. We went through the service and when we walked out, my husband said, okay, what's the negative? <laughs> and I said, well, the choir sings, you know, the word Sabbath wrong because he had said Sabaoth, which apparently is actually correct. And the choir director or, and the priests wear superhero cuffs. And if that's the only negative thing that I can find, well, that's not a very good reason not to do this. So I guess I'll follow you and we'll just, we'll learn and go and, and we'll become Orthodox. And that was kind of, kind of it, really. Once we did that, we started with the catechumen classes and jumped in both feet. And now we have, um, we were chrismated on St. Patrick's Day, yeah, 2003. And um, along with our two oldest children who had been baptized in the Episcopalian church. And now our other six children beyond them are all Orthodox from the very beginning. So that's it. <laughs>